Well, that's fine. I'll. I can stand, as long as I got a chair to lean on. Okay. I'll okay, I'll scoot over. All right. Is this gonna work? Go. All right. Yeah, whenever you're ready, Jared. Just point at me. Good morning and welcome to Play On Sports live coverage of the Northern Section Baseball Championships. We are at Butte College on a beautiful day here in Oroville, California, as we get ready for the Division Five Championship game. The Maxwell Panthers taking on the Chester Volcanoes. Hope you're enjoying the action, folks, or are about to enjoy the action wherever you are around the state of California, the Northern Section, around the U.S., or around the world. Following the action on playonsports.com. Jeff Kurtz alongside Greg Olivier, our producer today, Jared Wright, cameraman Jason Devine. We're set to bring you the first of a triple header here from Butte College. Six games today in the northern section, three of them taking place at Shasta. We'll have those available for you on demand at the end of the day. These games, though, live and then on demand after the fact. Greg, I know you're excited about today's games. So are the players out on the field. I'm uh, super excited. And like you said before, for Jeff, the day is beautiful. There's not a lot of wind. It's a perfect day for uh, the afternoon pastime. Temperatures are supposed to peak over 80 degrees here today, but this morning still under that mark. It's a great way to start the game. Meanwhile, Maxwell in a unusual position for the Maxwell Panthers in that they are not the n the higher seeded team, though they have been here now 11 straight years, looking to bounce bounce back from a loss in D5 last year. Yeah, they uh, they've changed leagues. Uh, they haven't really had to, to get comfortable with the new league that they're playing in so uh, they're but they're right back where they were and it's just the excellence in baseball here at, at Maxwell. Forrest Bateman who's also the athletic director at Maxwell is in his first year as the head coach taking over for longtime coach Eric Lay who moved over to Calusa who will be playing in our second game of the day who ended up winning league over Maxwell in that newly formed division so Coach Bateman continuing the tradition here at for the Maxwell Panthers. And meanwhile, for the Chester Volcanoes, they are in their first championship game at baseball in school history. Terry Hernandez, the longtime head football coach, guided his team to a number one seed in the championship this year. Basketball for Chester also landed them the number one seed in a championship game. Both times the teams have come up short. The baseball squad, the number one seed, now in a championship game. But dare I say it, Greg, this is the first time you could ever say there's a number one seed in the championship, yet they might be the underdog today to the Maxwell Panthers. Very much true. They lost their star player due to disciplinary actions earlier last week. So uh, they're a little bit shorthanded, as you notice. They only have 10 players suited up for this game, uh, and they're going to play everybody. All 10 players are going to get a taste of this championship championship atmosphere here. And Coach Hernandez starting four freshmen on top of that. It's a young squad, only one senior on the team. Maxwell coming in with a record of 22 and 6. Chester taking the field, the Volcanoes 15 and 8. They are in the green jerseys, green hats, white pants with the green striping and getting the starting nod today for Chester is Tim Cronin. Cronin with a record of 3 and 3, not the number one starter for this team. Hunter Morris, who's at shortstop today for the Volcanoes, only has three innings left at the high school level. You get a certain amount of innings per week, and given we've been in the middle of the playoffs, coaches have been handing those out proportionally as they can, trying to get the most out of their pitchers. So Morris, all things going well, says Coach Hernandez, likely to come on in the fifth. Let's go around the defensive lineup for you for Chester before we get to Maxwell's starting lineup. Cronin again on the mound. He's going to be throwing to Tristan James behind the plate. Down at third, place, third base is Damon Stevens. Hunter Morris at shortstop, Silas LeGrew at second base, Cole Connor over at first. In the outfield and left, Chris Bereznik, Isaac Thompson in center, Jason Schleter in right field. For Maxwell, their starting lineup, Bryce Perry, the shortstop, will be batting first. Blake Vieira at catcher batting second. David Lee is the third baseman, batting in the third spot in the order. Russell Jones, the first baseman, will bat fourth. Zach Troughton, the starting pitcher for Maxwell, batting fifth. 
Lane Legrand is the center fielder. He's batting sixth. Scott Wells is going to be batting seventh for Maxwell. He's going to be the designated hitter for Martine Rangel. Rangel is the starting left fielder for Maxwell, but at the high school level, you can elect to use the designated hitter or not, and you can DH for anybody in the lineup, unlike in the American League and the professional ranks, where you are batting almost exclusively for the pitcher. Meanwhile, Trent Mathis batting in the eighth spot in right field. Devin Lee, the second baseman, will bat ninth. Head coach Terry Hernandez for Chester. Longtime football coach, 19 years for the Volcanoes. And he is also now in his second stint as the head varsity coach for baseball. This is his fifth year in his most current rotation, 10 years overall as he was running the baseball program in the late 90s into the early part of the 21st century, which always sounds a little <laughs> odd to say, Greg, but he's, his coaching tenure has spanned two centuries. He's showing his age now, <laughs> I think. But uh, showing it well. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, he, he looks good. The team looks good. He said today that there were going to have to be a kind of a scrappy team and, and do, do the little things right in order to, to win this game. So you don't really hear that. I mean, when you come to these games, usually the number one seed is usually maybe a power hitting team or a really, really fast team. They don't have to scrap through. So it'll be interesting to see how this game uh, develops throughout the day. Our umpires, Doug Dresler behind the plate, Tony Campa down at first, Tony Lee at third, Bryce Perry has stepped in. Tim Cronin has gotten the sign from his catcher and he delivers low, or actually no, right in there at the knees, strike one. Perry, as you can see, batting from that right-hand side, the second pitch, that's gonna be in the dirt. And the count evens up. I think the first pitch was called the ball, actually. It was a little low. Well, let's see. We're, we had it seem <laughs> like it might be a delayed call from our home plate umpire, but oh, it is one and one. Yeah. Correct. So Doug Dresler with the dramatic delay on the first strike call, <laughs> but we do have it at one and one. This pitch is going to be driven into left field, fading on it is Bereznek to his right, and he makes the grab from his knees for the first out of the inning. So Perry flies out to left field, and there's one down in the top of the first. Blake Vieira now to the plate. Vieira, the starting catcher, batting 5.06, the junior, with 13 doubles and a triple this year. No home runs, but he is prone to the extra base hit as he takes inside for ball one. Top of the first inning, one down already for Cronin. His 1-0 delivery is in the dirt, ball two. Boy, how big would it be for Chester, especially with these young players, Greg, if they can get out of this top half of the first, get those nerves out? It'd be nice to, just to, to relax and enjoy the game as it comes to them here. Cronin gets a strike in there at the knees, two and one especially for such a young team. And with starting four freshmen, you think that Chester with this b is building something for the future as well. They certainly are, only one senior on the team. Here's a grounder down to third. That's Stevens with a long throw and by a step. Cole Connor with a stretch at first base and Vieira retired for the second out of the inning, five to three on the put out. And that will bring the third baseman, David Lee to the plate. So if you're looking at the starting lineup for Chester with that one senior on their team. I mean, that's that's putting a lot on your s freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. Here's a curveball that is going to be high and away for ball one. Lee looks at one in the dirt outside. 2-0, Lee batting 394 this year, also a junior. One of three players on the team with a home run this season for Maxwell. Lane Legrand, the sophomore, leading the team with two. This pitch well inside, 3-0, as Cronin now struggling a little bit with his control on this third hitter of the inning. Two down, nobody on. Yeah, Chester uh, has Cronin starting on the mound. He is trying to work deep into the game, so it's important to maximize outs and not give up walks here and there. 
uh, throughout the game. Well, there's a four pitch walk and Lee is on with two down and that brings up Russell Jones. And Jones, a senior, batting 394 as well this year, five doubles. Second on the team and runs batted in behind Lee with 28. And with two down and a runner aboard, Cronin from the stretch. And this one's going to be skied into right center field, calling for the ball, but unable to make the play. The center fielder, Thompson. And Lee is going to get all the way to third base on the miscue. So now they're runners at the corners for for Maxwell with two down. And the starting pitcher, Zach Troton, can help himself right here with a base hit. Yeah, good, uh, good base running by by Mr. Lee there, going first to second, or second, first to third, and and taking off with two outs. You really just got to go as soon as the ball's hit, uh, and there's just a misplay by the center fielder. Yeah, Thompson had to run a long way for that one, but it called off the right fielder, Schleter, Jason Schleter, and then couldn't make the play. First and third, two down in the inning. This pitch is inside, and the count evens at one and one. So Troton, with 26 runs batted in on the season, a homer and eight doubles. And a look at one on the inside corner for a strike. And now he finds himself in a hole as Cronin's trying to work his way out of this jam. Lee reached on a walk. Jones on the error in center field is at first. This is in the dirt. Nice job by the catcher, Tristan James. Good stuff. Blocking that one, and then. Ooh, looks to be hurt, a little shaken up. Yeah, he ended up taking that one. I don't know if that slipped in over the chest protector. I hope he's okay. Yeah, that was a tough one right there. I mean, that. God, it might have gotten him right in the throat. He is using the, the hockey style catcher's mask there, so if it did bounce out, it would just caught him right under the, the throat. Boy, area. how unfortunate is that? You got the the chest protector that ends right around the clavicle. You've got the hockey mask that drops down below your chin, and it gets in the little gap between the two. I remember back in the 70s, Steve Yeager, the catcher for the Dodgers, invented the throat protector because he got hit in the throat a couple of times, and the thing dropped all the way down. and. You haven't seen anyone use that for a long time. But no, the, you see a lot of the hockey style masks now to for more protection through uh, around the face area, and it does do a little bit of protection down by the throat, but nothing as extreme as the Jaeger throat protector. Well, one of the things Coach Hernandez said about Tristan James, who's one of the four freshmen playing, and a big load to handle for a freshman to be behind the plate, but he said one of his very good skills is he manages the game well, and he's very, very good at blocking baseballs in the dirt. That is his specialty, and you've seen it several times here in this first inning. As Cronin's not afraid to go low, and James has gotten in front of every single one of them. Big save right there. That could have saved a run. Two and two. This one's going to be bounced foul into the Chester dugout down the third base line. As long as Cronin can stay around the plate and, and make these hitters chase his pitches, uh, Chester will be in a very good good position throughout the day. Cronin's 2-2. Two -two. This is going to be ripped foul again down that third baseline by Troton. Count stays even. You know, one of the things as a hitter as well with Cronin, he's either been right on the money or he's been way off the money. And sometimes it's hard to get a beat as a hitter if the guy's just a little bit off. Yeah, maybe you can stay with it. He's in the same general area. But if he's up, down, low, high, then he's in on the inside corner. You're not <laughs> You're like, wait, I can't get a read on this no. guy. Cronin 2-2 two, two again. This one down to third. Going to get under the glove of Stevens down the line into left. Then get by the left fielder, Bereznak. One runner already in. Hustling is Jones. He's heading for home. The throw to the plate. Jones is going to get in. Troton's going to fake a move to third and then go back to second base. Well, Coach Hernandez said today we're going to need good defense, but defense failing Chester on those last couple of hitters, the error on the center fielder Thompson, and then two errors on that play, Stevens down the line, and then the ball getting by Bereznak in left field results in two early runs for Maxwell. Field, 
So Troton on on the air, and then it, we're going to have a runner for him. And you, you can pinch run for your pitcher as needed. He hit that ball really well, struck it well, uh, just got it right on the barrel of the bat, and it was just a hard shot down there by third. A little tough to come up with that play. Cronin with two down trying to work out of this. Ball low, 1-0. and oh. Well, Cronin was breezing there early on. A fly out to left, a grounder to third. He had two down in the inning, but then a walk, an error to center, an error by the third baseman, and two runs home for Maxwell as this one's going to be bounced foul. The batter is Lane Legrand, the center fielder. Wind blowing slightly from right to left. Our flag's out in right field. Cronin's 1-1, one, one, breaking ball. This is high and away, 2-1. and one. Chester playing LeGram pretty much straight away. Thompson's cheated over just a touch to his right out in center. This pitch is going to be pulled foul. And the count's even once again at 2-2. Two two. Yeah, the Maxwell hitters seem like they're starting to time Cronin up really well, and they're pulling everything foul. It's just a matter of time until they can straighten one out here. The 2-2 two -two delivery is way high, and the count now full. Good patience at the plate, and he's uh, moved up in the box a little bit uh, before that, the beginning of this at bat. He was all the way back in the box, but you see he's taking a step up. It's a nice adjustment by Legrand. We'll see if it pays dividends. This one's going to hit him, though. On a 3-2 pitch, Legrand hit. And now the runners at first and second for designated hitter Scott Wells, the first lefty in the lineup for Maxwell. Well, we discussed a few minutes ago, Greg, about how great would that be for Chester to get a 1-2-3 inning. They were two-thirds of the way through it and now staring at a little bit of trouble, already down 2-0. This pitch is in there for a strike right at the knees. Boy, when Cronin has been on, he has been on exactly where you want to be. Right, low and at the knees. It's tough to hit that pitch. First and second. For the Panthers, this one is in the dirt. James blocks it. The throw down to third is going to go into left field. And that will get another run in for the Panthers. And over to second base goes Legrand. So the throwing error by the catcher, James, who blocked the ball nicely in the dirt, but then trying to get the runner advancing to third base on the play, threw it into left. Ugh. And that's a tough break right there for, for Chester. As here's a ground ball to Silas LeGru, and he handles it over to Cole Connor for the end of the inning, but not before. Three runs are aboard for Maxwell. Top half of the first in the books. Three nothing Panthers in this Division Five championship game. You're following the action here on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here today? Tell your school to sign up for Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Jeff Kurtz with Greg Olivier as we get ready for the bottom of the first inning. And let's get you set up with the defensive alignment for the Maxwell Panthers and the starting nine batting lineup for the Chester Volcanoes. First, Zach Troton out on the mound, a record of six and three on the year for Maxwell. He'll be throwing to Blake Vieira behind the plate. David Lee down at third base. Bryce Perry over at short. Devin Lee at second base. That is David's brother, Russell Jones at first. Martin Rangel in left field, Lane Legrand in center, Trent Mathis in right. Meanwhile, for Chester, they're going to be batting Hunter Morris, the shortstop. He'll bat first. Tim Cronin, the pitcher, will bat second. Cole Connor at first base, batting third. Spencer Lee is a designated hitter. As Coach Hernandez playing all 10 on his roster here today. He'll be batting for the second baseman, Silas LeGru. 
Damon Stevens batting fifth. He's the third baseman. Jason Schleter, the right fielder, bats sixth. Isaac Thompson, the center fielder, bats seventh. Tristan James in the eighth spot. He's the catcher. Chris Bereznik, the left fielder, bats ninth. Troughton, a big left-hander. Out there on the mound, getting ready to face Morris. Yeah, Maxwell needs to just go ahead and put that last inning out of their heads, get up here and, and get the sticks going. If they can do that, they can put that last inning behind them and, and chip back in this game. There's still a lot of baseball left here today. 3 nothing, our score. Trojan's first pitch is outside for a ball. That one also a little bit outside, 2-0. Oh. Well, if Morris can get on here, that will certainly boost Chester's spirits in that dugout right now as this one is going to miss. Nope, catch the corner, 2-1. and one. I'm going to have to go slowly on my no, strike calls <laughs> here with our home plate umpire. The 2-1 is going to be lined past the second baseman. Nice job, a single to right center, and Morris is aboard. Nice bit of hitting there by Morris, Greg, as Troton was away, 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 and Morris went with that pitch to the right side and gets a base hit. Absolutely. Good piece of hitting right there. Just line drive right back up the box. He was patient, waited for his pitch, and did what he could with it. Now batting is Tim Cronin with a runner on, nobody out. And Cronin <laughs> looks at one high, 1-0. and oh. I hesitated there just to make sure. <laughs> you have to. It's just that little... Uh, Okay. Cronin good. batting 340 this year. Just one extra base hit. Here's a toss over to first base, and Morris is back in easily. Morris leads the team with stolen bases with nine. Cronin second with eight. And there's another toss over to the first baseman, Russell Jones. But you can get the sense, Greg. Morris has got a few more steps if he wants them because he's back in easily right now with a head first slide. Here's the pitch. This one low and in, and it's 2-0. and oh. this, is, uh, this is actually a pretty good pitch to, to go on. It's going to have, have to be a strike. It's going to be a fastball, maybe some of a hit and run right here. Well, this one's going to be outside. Or outside. 3-0. and oh. <laughs> <laughs> So Troton looking like he's still trying to find a bit of a rhythm here in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Cronin's taking here all the way. Cronin is going to look at one, and that is going to catch the outside corner, three and one. Terry Hernandez coaching down at third base. And Dave Wren over at first. This one's popped in the air, 3-1 to the second baseman, Devin Lee. He calls for it on the infield grass and makes the play, and there's one down. That'll bring Cole Connor to the plate. Connor, one of the better hitters on this team, leads the team and runs batted in with 29, batting 453 this season. And Coach Terry Hernandez was saying that uh, that Cole Connor was the quarterback for the football team as well. So he's got a lot of athletic ability here. First pitch is a strike on Connor. One down in the inning. Morris gets his lead at first. Swing and a miss. And it's going to be strike two on Connor, who finds himself in a hole. Spencer Lee on deck. and throw over. That time Morris didn't even need to slide. So, again, he's got some room if he wants it. And strike three swinging. Connor goes down on a pitch in the inside corner. And there are two away. Good pitch. Put him away. It's tough to hit those, those low and away ones, especially when he's hit those spots early in the, in the count. So that brings up Spencer Lee. Lee batting 439. 
three doubles on the year. That one's just going to miss just off the outside edge. Might be a good time for Morris to go here, try to get in scoring position. Yeah, let's uh, make something happen here. Low and in on that one. You know, you don't have to make up the whole three-run deficit here in the first inning, but getting one up on the board will help immensely. Yes. I, I agree. That. And Troton, thinking maybe the same thing, throws over to first. Two balls, no strikes on Lee. That one's outside oh. and then thrown into right field. Well, this is going to get Morris over to second base. As he slides in, then comes off the bag, and they got him. Wow, nice heads-up play by Devin Lee as Morris overslides the bag, and Lee gets the tag down before he can get back, and that ends the inning. So it looked like Chester was going to get set up nicely there with a runner in second after the error by the catcher, Vieira. But instead, Lee, the heads-up play, and that ends the inning. So Spencer Lee will get a chance to hit again, but it is 3-0 after one here in this Division V championship game. Maxwell getting set to hit top of the second. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week. From your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Well, Greg, one inning in the books, and Maxwell doing a nice job defensively and then taking advantage of some early Chester mistakes. Yeah, just uh, unfortunate, uh, and Coach Hernandez said it too, that we have to play solid defense uh, to, to keep the game close, and it just – not the case here, just a couple miscues here and there. Grounder gets under a glove, or gets by, center fielder misses a fly up ball. So, and that very quickly turns into three runs. So you're in a hole, you just got to keep fighting, though. As we turn our attention to the top of the second inning, Maxwell, I'll let you know they're going to be sending up here. They've got the bottom of the order, Trent Mathis and Devin Lee. Then they're going to rotate back to the top in the form of Bryce Perry. So it's your 8, 9, and 1 hitters. Good spot to be in if you're the visiting team. You want to go ahead and, and, and put, up, put up some more pressure on the home team. And hopefully you can almost beat them into submission at this point if they put up another 3 spot. Cronin's first pitch. It's going to miss outside ball 1. Trent Mathis this year. Probably be the first to tell you not his best season at the plate batting average wise. This one's in the dirt ball too. Batting 158, the junior. Nine runs batted in. Nine hits as well. So when he is putting the ball in play, <laughs> that, is, that is efficient right there. That one's going to catch the inside corner for a strike, two and one. I'll tell you what, he might, his batting <laughs> average may not be where he wants it to be, but he takes advantage of those hits. Yeah, every time I get a hit, I get an RBI. I'll take that every day. This one is going to be a swing and a miss, and the count is even at two and two. Cronin has given up three runs in the game, but none of them earned so far. Two two delivery is going to be bounced down the line and foul. And Damon Stevens is going to have an active day, I think, down at third base. He has had a number of balls hit his way. Yeah, just uh, they don't call it the hot corner for <laughs> no reason there. <laughs> the sophomore has seen a number of foul balls down that third base line. A couple have been hit to him. He's made a play on one. Here's the two two. And it's going to be swung on and missed, but the ball gets away from James. Here's the throw down to first base, and he's going to retire Mathis. So Mathis didn't re recognize right away as he checked his swing that the ball had gotten away from the catcher. If he hadn't bounced right away, he might have gotten there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think that rolled all the way back here to the fence. So a strikeout, and then uh, catcher to first put out retires the leadoff batter in the inning, and that brings up Devin Lee. Lee batting 270 this season, three extra base hits, all doubles. 
the second baseman. This was one up and in, ball one. We mentioned earlier that Devin Lee and David Lee brothers, Devin a freshman, David a junior. Low and in, ball two. It's gotta be, it's gotta be nice for the freshman to have that kind of uh, elderly leadership and, and your brother there too, to help you out throughout the whole process. And they'll have another year together next year too, so. The 2-0 pitch is low and in, ball three. I suppose that depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> when you're with your brother, that can depend on the day. <laughs> One down in the inning, the 3-0 delivery from Gronin. And that one's in the dirt as well. And down to first on the walk goes Devin Lee. And I know Tristan James is young, but if that kid can put on some skates, he might have a future as an NHL goalie at some point in <laughs> along the line because he's got that butterfly stop going today. Cronin is throwing a lot that are low, and James has been blocking everything. Back to the top of the lineup, Bryce Perry flew out to left in the first. This one's in the dirt again. James is going to knock it down, but no chance to make a play on Lee, who is running. And Lee is down to second base on the wild pitch. So Perry... Who flew out to left to begin the game 0 for 1. Runner in scoring position with one down and a 1 0 count. And Perry is going to bunt and he's going to bunt foul. Good idea to get the runner over to third. Though an interesting debate happening, especially in the professional ranks, about the value of the sacrifice bunt. You've got your sabermetric supporters <laughs> who say you're giving away an out and there's no reason to bunt at all. Then you've got your traditionalists who are saying, hey, if you want to move the guy over. So it's interesting to see the statistics versus the history of the game. This one's down the line, going to get under the glove of Stevens. Perry says, what bunt? I'm going to drive in a run and hustling around from second base. Lee is going to score standing up. And on the single by Perry, he's giving his team a 4-0 lead. Nice job by Perry. That pitch low and in, Greg, and he turned on it and got it just under the glove of Stevens, who was diving to his right down at third base. And Stevens is almost on the line. I mean, there was not <laughs> a lot of room there between Stevens and the chalk. That just tells you how hard that ball was hit right there. Blake Vieira, who grounded out to Stevens in his first at bat, shows bunt. This one's in the dirt. James throw to second base, and Perry in easily with a steal. And even though that throw wasn't on a line, I think. James hindered a little bit by the fact that he had to short hop that one out of the dirt by home plate. One down in the inning. Turning and showing bunt again. This one low and outside and down to third goes Perry again. So he's got two. Two and zero. Oh. Runner at third base, one down in the top of the second. Already 4 nothing. Maxwell. Cronin from the stretch with a runner at third. This one high in the air to left. This could get a run in. Now fading into foul ground and making the catch is Bereznek. Nice job staying with that baseball. That is the second out of the inning, but on the sacrifice fly, the run scores. The RBI by Vieira, and it's a 5 nothing ball game. Gets the job done. Got another run up on the board. It's uh, it's going to be tough for, for them to come back now. Well, only one hit in the game so far for, for Maxwell, but five runs on the board. Here's the breaking ball to the number three hitter, David Lee, who walked with two out and came around to score in the first inning. He takes outside ball one. This one is going to be fouled straight back over the press box here at Butte College. Fantastic facility here at Butte and a long time home for half of these Northern Section Baseball Championships. The 1-1. It's going to be bounced towards short, ranging into the hole is Morris. Long throw to first, good stretch by Cole Connor, and that retires David Lee to end the inning, but not before. Two more runs up on the scoreboard for Maxwell. They've gotten a crooked number in the first and the second. They lead it 
five nothing here at Butte College. Bottom of the second coming up. You're following the Northern Section Division Five Championships right here on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Play on Sports will have live coverage of the Northern Section Track and Field Finals on Friday, May 24th. You can also watch highlights from the championships of every spring sport in the Northern Section on PlayOnSports.com. Don't forget to check the Play on Sports broadcast schedule page for information on all of our upcoming broadcasts from around the Northern Section and beyond. The spring championships are here only on PlayOnSports.com. It'll be Spencer Lee, Damon Stevens, and Jason Schleter, the three in the order we're going to face. Zach Troughton in the bottom of the second inning. Lee in particular with a bit of an advantage, having seen a number of pitches. Hunter Morris retired with Lee at the plate in the bottom of the first inning on the rare 2-9-4 put out. <laughs> Catcher trying to get Morris at first. Vieira threw it over the head of his first baseman, Russell Jones, and that's difficult to do. Jones has got some height on him. And instead, the right fielder, Trent Math, has tracked it down, threw to Devin Lee at covering second base. And when Morris slid over the bag and tried to get back to it, Lee applied the tag, and that ended the threat by Chester in the bottom of the first inning. So Spencer Lee steps in. Lee, one of the freshmen on this team, batting 439. And that's a nice pitch that catches the back edge of the plate for a strike. Oof, tough to hit anything like that. Boy, if Troughton settles in here in the second base, uh, second inning, excuse me, look out. This one's going to be a one hopper to the third baseman. Nice job coming up on that, David Lee, and making the play. If he lets that bounce one more time, you get in the difficult short hop situation, and he attacked that one aggressively, Greg. Absolutely. Uh, you got to catch that before it gets into that other hop, uh, especially with top spin on it. Who knows? It could trickle under the glove. It can uh, bounce back up and hit you in the throat, which I personally have felt or have seen <laughs> a number of times. <laughs> I tell you folks, that's not something you want to experience. Stepping in is Damon Stevens. Or, uh, he's going to take one low, ball one. Stevens a sophomore, just a shade under 300 this year, batting 295. That one's a strike. One of two players with a home run on this team. As that one misses away, two and one. He and Schleter, the freshman with the two home runs for Chester combined. But Coach Hernandez is telling us before the game, we're not going to amaze you with our power. This is not a, the design of our team. Home runs are just a happy bonus as the count now moves to three and two with one down in the inning. Nice job by Stevens working deep in the count. Troughton's 3-2 is going to be fouled back off the screen. Good approach by Stevens here. Uh, just Get something that he can hit. Get something that he can drive. Protect the plate. What an experience for some of these kids, too. I mean, a freshman in there, big game, championship game, facing a quality pitcher and battling. This is something that the ball is going to be poked over the first baseman's head. Jones can't track it down and bounces foul. But you can see Stevens up there not trying to do too much with these pitches. Just put the bat on the ball and make something happen. Uh, good approach to hitting. Always is. You know, and to the casual fan, that seems like – one of those cliches of baseball, keep your <laughs> eye on the ball, put your bat on the ball. Easier said than done, folks, especially the temptation for a lot of these hitters is to try to pull those outside pitches, and Stevens sticking with it. Now he's going to look at strike three. Troughton does a nice job there changing up and going a little bit up the ladder and catching it just above the belt for the second out of the inning. Whew. Still good at bat, good battle. He saw a lot of pitches, uh, unable to – to pull the trigger on that last pitch, he was probably, I don't know if he was looking for fastball up, but. Left-hander stepping in. This is Jason Schleter. Schleter batting 222 this year. Looked at ball one, then looks at ball two. That one's in there for a strike, and the count is now two and one. Two down, nobody on. A five-nothing Maxwell lead in the bottom of the second inning. That one's going to catch the outside corner again, and the count even at two and two. Troton's got great movement on these pitches. The two-two delivery. That's going to be low, and the count runs full again. Second batter in a row. 
good approach by by the Maxwell batters here. Or by the Chester batters. The 3-2. That's going to get the outside corner strike three. Well, two times Troton goes to a full count, and both times he catches the Volcanoes looking. Third strikeout of the game through two innings of play. It's a 5 nothing lead for Maxwell. We move to the top of the third inning. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the one you're enjoying here today? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Tim Cronin out for his third inning of work. He has yielded two earned runs so far, five total, and he'll be facing the four, five, and six batters in the order for Maxwell. It'll be Russell Jones, Zach Troton, and Lane Legrand. Just amazing right now, Greg, that you've got five runs on the board if you're Maxwell and you've gotten one hit. I mean, we could say Cronin is working on a one-hitter here, but <laughs> but I don't think you'd be too happy with this particular one-hitter given he's trailing by five runs at the moment. Not at all, but uh, good pitching by him. He's just got to stay a little more consistent and around the plate uh, to get these hitters to chase. He's bounces on a lot of his, his off-speed stuff in front of the plate, so it's not even an option for these hitters to chase at that. If he can keep it up a little bit more so it gets to the plate, then maybe he can get him to start fishing and really not even put the ball in play. Yeah, we talked earlier about how sometimes it's difficult as a hitter when the pitcher's all over the place, and then suddenly they catch the strike zone. It's difficult to get your timing down, but after you see him once and you start to figure that out, now you're just waiting for something where you want it and ignoring everything else, especially Absolutely. if he's not nibbling on the corners. Absolutely, and uh, uh, we'll see how those Maxwell hitters go through the second time in the lineup seeing Cronin. Well, Russell Jones extended the first inning on a pop-up to short right center field. Isaac Thompson overran the ball, couldn't make the play, and that error resulted in a run. Here is a great attempt by Bereznak going to his right out in left field, but he can't come down with the ball on a diving effort. And Jones is going to roll into second base with a double. Well, Jones was not going to leave this up to fate on that particular <laughs> one. And Bereznik almost took it away from him. Making a great effort going to his right and diving full extension to try to get that ball. And it went off his glove. And Jones is a leadoff man aboard. For the first time in the game. Maxwell, unbelievable. They have yet to get the leadoff man aboard through the first two. They do in the third as Troton looks at one low. Troton reached on an error, came around to score in his first at-bat. Cronin in the dirt. Oh. James gets on that ball. Here's the throw to third. It's going to get away from Stevens and... Nice backup by Hunter Morris. That was a close play at third. Jones, a late jump on that one as the ball rolled away from James. Almost had him. <laughs> that was a close play. You could hear the, the stadium go, oh, <laughs> as he took off running. Uh, James didn't have to go far to go pounce on that ball. So Troton looks at one. And that's going to be high, 3-0. So runner at third, nobody out. Cronin going from the full windup. And that one is low ball four. So runners at the corners with no one out here in the top of the third inning and Lane Legrand at the batter. Legrand got on board after he was hit by a pitch on a 3-2 count and his first at bat was stranded at second base. Meanwhile, we're gonna have a runner for Troton is coming on to run for him as he did the first time Troton got on base is Brian Berg, the sophomore. So Berg now over at first. He's going to go right away. James is going to throw down to second, and I think he was anticipating that Cronin would grab the ball, and Cronin ducked. Fortunately, Jones stays at third base. Nice job by Silas LeGrew backing up the play, and now James is going to have a conversation with Cronin and say, when we get in that situation again, <laughs> you want to grab that thing. Yeah, that <laughs> I think he surprised Cronin with, with the throw so low. And from our vantage point, I thought he was going to hit him. I was like, oh, look out. 
Cronin, I think, went into self-defense mode. As opposed to, it, that's not an unusual play in a first and third situation as right. you try to get the guy who might be leaning from third base. But Jones elects to stay put. So we've got a runner at second and third. And a 1-0 count on LeGrand. And LeGrand should have bunt in that first pitch. But now I'm pretty sure he's got the green light to swing away. James once again stops another one in the dirt. Outstanding work by the catcher here through three innings. Yeah, the, <laughs> the shin guards are getting a work out there. Infield is in for Chester. That pitch is in there for a strike. Two and one. Jones gets his lead from third. Cronin now in the stretch. Delivers. This one's going to be popped foul on what might have been ball three beyond the third base coaching box, and the count evens at two and two. That one was way up and in. Yeah, I thought I had a chance of hitting him again. Man. <laughs> he really turned on that ball. He certainly did. <laughs> God, that ball may have hit just above his hands. <laughs> the 2-2 two -two pitch. And that one is strike three. Nice job by James hanging on to that baseball, and that's the first out of the inning, and a big one. And that'll bring Scott Wells to the plates. Wells bounced to LaGrew in the first inning. Yeah, the infield's in right now. It looks like they're going to try to cut down the runner at home uh, and stop the bleeding, per se. Well, James can't block that one, but Jones is going to stay where he is. Nice hustle by James, tracking that one down by the Maxwell on deck circle, right in front of their dugout. Safe to say that Jones is perhaps not the fleetest of foot and electing to play within himself there and not try to make a move. Yeah, he probably knows his limitations, so uh, that didn't skirt far enough away, and James is kind of quick on his feet. So, Well, and give your hitter the opportunity to make a play with one out. Absolutely. No need to put anything at risk here on the base pads. You're up by five. Good contact hitter up, so nothing wrong with that. Wells is going to get this oh. one up the middle. Ooh. Morris, what a play. Dives to his left and makes the grab on the line drive and saves two runs. What a play by Morris. Full extension. Holy cow. Especially with the infield in two, there's not a whole lot of reaction time. He, uh. Someone cue ESPN for their web <laughs> gems this evening. That was a fantastic play. What quick reaction playing in as well. Two down, and the infield back to regular depth, and this one into left field. Bereznik's got a bead on it, and he oh. bobbles it with a basket <laughs> catch and then grabs it with a bare hand. And Terry <laughs> Hernandez just aged five years on the in the dugout there for Chester on that play, but that ends the inning. And Maxwell, despite getting the leadoff man aboard for the first time in the game, strands two. And we move to the bottom of the third inning. Maxwell leading in this D5 final, 5 nothing. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. Well, Chester had an active inning defensively, Greg, is a fantastic play by Morris. And then Bereznek, the juggling catch, as he got it in that, that situation where do I flip my glove around? Do I basket catch it? He tried the basket catch and pobbled into the air and he caught it with a bare hand. Nice concentration by the left fielder. And we turn our attention to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be Isaac Thompson, Tristan James, and then Chris Bereznek, the seven, eight, nine hitters, who will get their first at bat against Zach Troton. Great play. I, that was an uh, unbelievable just sequence of defensive plays there. One, I mean, first by the shortstop, you get that all important second out, and then under the fly ball. Uh, great concentration, like you said, and then. Gets the out and gets out of the jam, which it really could have been painful if that ball falls. Well, that, I mean, you could have had two runs on that base hit up the middle if Morris doesn't make that outstanding play at short. And then, again, the opportunity, Bresnik drops that ball. Guy's in motion with two outs on contact. That's two runs right there. So, nice job staying with the play, Bresnik, as Thompson steps in, the center fielder. And he looks at one well outside for ball one. 
Thompson this year batting 143. Only 21 plate appearances pressed into service late in the year. And he has stepped into the center field role, takes a strike. Yeah, I see the defensive lineman, the center fielder is way over in right center. Swing and a miss, strike two. An unusual statistic here, Thompson, two for 14 this year, but in his 21 plate appearances, seven runs batted in. <laughs> I haven't seen too many Chester games this year, but he's either a sacrifice fly or sacrifice butt machine. He's going to ground out to third base right there, and nice job by David Lee coming up and making the play, and we got one down in the inning. And Tristan James steps in. And James right now in the lead for a guy who's most going to need an ice bath after this game, having <laughs> blocked so many balls in the dirt. Either that or he's going to need a new chest protector, and we're going to start a fund up here in the press box for him. He has been working that thing today, but he's been all over it behind home plate, and he's going to take the first pitch for a strike on the outside corner. James, just a freshman. This is only his 19th plate appearance of this season, and he's going to swing and miss at strike two. Looks like Coach Hernandez does have a lot of talent that he gets to work with for the next four years, and all this will do, uh, if anything, is give that experience of playing in championship-level games. Troton way outside, and the count is now one and two. One down in the inning, bottom of the third. That one's going to be bounced right back to Troton. Ranges off the mound, and the underhand toss to Jones records the second out of the inning. 1-3 on the put out. And the left fielder Bereznek to the plate. Bereznek, 341 this season. Five extra base hits, one of them a triple. Batting from the left side. And he's going to pull this one foul down the first base line. Nine runs batted in, fifth on the team. I like his aggressiveness. Uh, Troton's throwing a lot of strikes, first pitch strikes too. So be aggressive out there. It might be the best pitch you see in this whole at bat. That one waved at and missed on the outside part of the plate for strike two. <sighs> Said he was going to come in, and then he goes away. Oh. You would have been fooled on that one, Greg. Huh? Yeah, and then this one's in the dirt, but swung on and missed. Hustling down to first base. The throw is going to retire Bereznik. Nice job by Blake Vieira hopping on top of that to record the put out to first after the swinging strike three. So that is the fourth K of the game by Troton. We've completed three innings. It remains 5 nothing, Maxwell. Play on Sports will have live coverage of the Northern Section Track and Field Finals on Friday, May the 24th. You can also watch highlights from the championships of every spring sport in the Northern Section on PlayOnSports.com. Don't forget to check the Play on Sports broadcast schedule page for information on all of our upcoming broadcasts from around the Northern Section and beyond. The spring championships are here and only on PlayOnSports.com. Jeff Kurtz alongside Greg Olivier, Jared Wright, our producer, Jason Devine providing all the video for you today. Here on our website, the first of three that we're going to be playing at Butte College today, and we couldn't ask for a finer day at the ballpark. And fans enjoying it from both Maxwell and Chester. Chester making the long drive down from the mountains. In fact, Coach Hernandez telling us before the game, they are the last ones on the baseball field every year because of the snow. So he said, mostly what I do is teaching. And I don't mean just in the classroom. He means out on the baseball field, base running, a bunch of other skills that to the casual observer, you think, oh, that's elementary. You just see it happen all the time. But how do you get a good lead? How do you get a good secondary lead? How do you read the infield and the outfield to determine how you're going to break on a ball, depending on where it's played? And all those subtleties of the game that you often miss when – just looks like the pitcher's scuffing the rubber, the batter <laughs> steps out, then he steps in, then he calls time. There's a lot going on, folks, in the signals and the nuances of the game. And we'll hope to be bringing that to you all day long here at Butte College on PlayOnSports.com. Cronin out there for what could be his last inning of work. Hunter Morris was, at least in the original plan, set to go out for the fifth. Cronin's actually done a decent job out there. He's not been helped by his defense through the first two innings, though they came alive in the third and made some outstanding plays. He'll be facing Devin Lee 
And then back to the top of the order in Bryce Perry and Blake Vieira. All runs so far, excuse me, three of the five runs in the game unearned. This is Devin Lee, the freshman. And Lee batting 270 this season, 22 runs batted in, a good freshman year. And he's going to look at a pitch in the outside corner for strike one. Outfield playing straight away. This look one out. is going to be <laughs> a curveball that gets away from Cronin. And if Lee was 6'2", he'd be standing on first <laughs> base, but he's about 5'10", and he ducked under that one. The 1-1 one, one pitch, and that's going to be low, 2-1. and one. I'd, I'd rather hit anyway. I, I never really <laughs> like getting hit by baseballs or contesting to the umpire. That didn't get me. That didn't get me. A, it hurts. B, <laughs> guys like to get in there and get their cuts. Absolutely. I'm, I'm here to hit. I, I think that's what a lot of the players that go up to the play have that kind of intention or, or – outlook for, for taking their at-bats and their cut. Cronin caught the inside corner on that last one for strike two. Tries to go back to the same spot, just misses, and the count is full now on the leadoff hitter in the inning, Devin Lee. Lee walked and scored his first time up in the second inning. The 3-2 pitch, that's going to miss away, and he walks again. So the leadoff man aboard for the second inning in a row for Maxwell, and that'll bring Bryce Perry to the plate. Perry, one for two. He's got one of the two hits in the game for Maxwell. A couple of stolen bases. Excuse me, stolen bases. He's scored and driven in a run. Uh, the shortstop's had an active day. Devin Lee with the lead at first. Cronin comes set. Showing bunt, and that's going to be a strike. And getting down... To second is Lee as that ball was in the dirt. And so on that play, Lee advances. Maxwell still playing the small ball, though, moving runners into scoring position with less than two outs, or in this case, no outs, which is good. Now anything driven, driven in the field. Yeah, Bereznek going to his oh. right and makes oh. another basket catch on a knee. I tell you, I got to think that Coach Hernandez is aging every time <laughs> Bereznek <laughs> is making plays out there. Nice job by Bereznek concentrating on that one for the put out in the first out of the inning. That's the second time Perry has been retired by Bereznek in the game. And Blake Vieira steps in. He's 0 for 1. Drove in a run with a sacrifice fly to Bereznek in left back in the second inning. And he takes strike one. Lee is at second. He walked. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Outfield playing Vieira slightly to pull. That one's going to be right to Bereznik again on a line, and he's got that one. Second out. Bereznik is having an active day. He'll take it, though. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps the game interesting, especially out in the outfield. Well, they've recorded... 11 outs so far, and he's got four of them. Make that five, excuse me. So almost half of them <laughs> by Bereznik and left. Oh. Here's a pickoff attempt at second base. It's going to hit Devin Lee. Right now, it looks like it might have gotten him right in the Elbow. arm. As Morris was going over, Cronin threw it in exactly the right spot. You want to throw it at the bag, shortstop side. That's exactly what he did, and... It hit Lee right in the forearm. And Lee doesn't have a lot of extra meat on, meat on him there to <laughs> absorb something like that, at least at this stage of his life. But he seems to be shaking that off as Coach Bateman goes out there to check on him. And he seems to be okay. We've got two down in the top of the fourth inning. Lee aboard on that walk, advancing to second on a wild pitch, then two putouts by Chris Bereznek and left, and... David Lee is going to try to knock in his other younger brother here. Lee 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. He bounced a shortstop the last time. He hits one to Morris again. Morris with a nice long throw. Retires David Lee for the second time in his many at-bats. So nice job by Chester. The leadoff man aboard for the second inning for Maxwell, but doesn't yield any runs. We move to the bottom of the fourth inning. We're midway through this baseball game in the Division 5 championship game. 5-0, Maxwell leading it over Chester. 
Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here today? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Zach Troughton out for his fourth inning of work. He's going to be facing Hunter Morris, Tim Cronin, and Cole Connor, the one, two, and three hitters in the Volcanoes order. Troughton faced Morris back in the first, a leadoff single. And since that point, Troughton has been all over it on the mound. Four strikeouts, and nobody has hit the ball out of the infield. No, and he's really grooving right now, and that's what you want, especially to be a dominant pitcher. You want to, when you face that bottom half of the lineup, you want to go ahead and put them all down real quick, real fast. If it's strikeouts, that's fine. If it's ground up their flyouts, that'll work too. That'll keep your pitch count down as well. So excellent work by Troton, the big lefty, uh, hitting, that, pounding that strike zone, and, and just making these these hitters for for uh, Chester swing and, and miss at a lot of these pitches. So. Well, we'll see if the Volcanoes can respond here. They've got four more at-bats to make something happen, and here's a guy who can certainly get him going, Hunter Morris. He singled to right field, right center field, to begin the ball game, and then almost got himself in scoring position with two outs in the inning, but overslid the bag at second base and was tagged out on a pickoff attempt that from catcher to first that went out into right field. This is a beautiful curveball that's in there for strike one. So we'll see if Morris can get the Volcanoes going here in the top of the fourth. He's gonna look at one low and count evens at one and one. Morris may be out on the mound as well next inning. He was scheduled to start the fifth for the Volcanoes. This one's high and away, ball two. And you can see Greg Troton here is trying to stay well away from Morris. Yeah, he seems to be one of the more dangerous hitters in the lineup, this and he shows it again. Deep fly ball, fading on it, and coming down with it is the center fielder, Lane Legrand, who is playing in exactly the spot where Hunter Morris hit the ball the first time in short right center field. And had to turn and catch that one over his left shoulder fading on it towards center for the first out of the inning. He hit it well, he just to the deepest part of the field. Technically, you, you want to stay away from those, especially with a good center fielder out there. Well, nice recovery by Legrand, and now Tim Cronin, the batter. Cronin popped to second base in his first at bat and swings it, misses at strike one. Strike two on another swing and a miss. Very aggressive at the plate is uh, Tim Cronin. Well, and Cronin looks like he's being fooled by the off-speed stuff by Troton because his head was pulling out on that one. This one is low and in, one and two. One of the things I like at the high school level, Greg, is that you know in the pros, the minute someone looks at the ball funny, they're throwing out and getting a new baseball. Here at the high school level, and I know some of it is economics. You can't be afford you can't afford to do that all the time. <laughs> that ball hits the dirt, rolls around a little bit. Let's keep using it. Is it still in the same circular shape? Great. No scuffs no on it. Yeah. This one's going to be swung on and missed, but it gets away from the catcher Vieri. He's got a tough throw down to first and just gets Cronin hustling down. That's a second time that Vieira's had to make that play. Fifth strikeout of the game for Troton, second out of the inning. That brings up Cole Connor, who struck out swinging in his first at bat in the first inning. Nice job by Vieira bouncing on that one quickly, and Connor swings and misses at strike one. And that was a somewhat of an uncommitted swing. Yeah, <laughs> he was swinging he, at it, but he wasn't too happy about it. I think he was a little fooled on the pitch. Swings and misses at strike two. Seems like Trump's found his groove here. I don't know how many innings he has done so far throughout the playoffs, but if he can continue grooving this way. This one's going to be bounced over his head, hustling on it, the shortstop, the throw safe. Nice job, Cole Connor. Beats the throw from Perry with a head first dive into the bag. And the second hit of the game for Chester. They've got a runner on with two down. Good hustle there by Connor. Just going out and Charlie Hustle that uh, that single there. The full Superman dive into first base. 
and he is safe. And now Spencer Lee, the batter. Lee grounded out to third in his first at bat. That's a swing and a miss on a pitch on the inside half of the plate. Strike one. Good cut by Spencer there. Troton is going to throw over. Almost gets. Oh, he did get Connor leaning. Wow. Connor was leaning right and then didn't dive back into the bag, thinking he could get in there standing up, and Troton picks him off. And that is how the second, or excuse me, the fourth inning comes to a close. So Chester gets their second hit of the game, but Connor is picked off, and we move to the top of the fifth inning. The score remains Maxwell 5, Chester nothing. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Well, as we go to the fifth inning, it is Hunter Morris out on the mound for Chester. He will replace Tim Cronin. So Cronin finishes four innings in the books, two earned runs. And then Cronin, looks like he's moved over to shortstop. Okay. Not a lot of options for Hernandez, yeah. for Coach <laughs> Hernandez. You got 10 players in the roster. But that looks like that's the case. So Cronin over at short, but we'll send our trusty analyst, Greg Olivier, to confirm that really quickly. So we'll send him over to make sure that's the case. In the meantime, Hunter Morris back out on the mound, the best pitcher on the team for Chester. I'll give you Morris's particulars here. Morris five and two this season in 11 appearances. He's thrown 40 innings. As we've got an update, so Damon Stevens is now over at shortstop. And Tim Cronin has moved to third base. So Cronin, four innings, two earned runs, five total. He is the pitcher of record right now for Chester as we are in the top of the fifth inning. Russell Jones, Zach Troton, Lane Legrand set to hit for Maxwell this inning. They are the four, five, and six hitters in the order. And Russell Jones, who doubled and is also reached on an error by the center fielder Thompson, scored a run and stranded at third in the third inning. Just watching his approach earlier uh, as his first two at-bats, he's really aggressive at the plate. I wouldn't be surprised if he swung at the first pitch here. Morris, his first delivery is a breaking ball that is going to be low for ball one. Jones checking his swing. The 1-0, that's also low. Or oh, actually, no, in at the knees, strike two, or strike one, excuse me, one and one. It's hard to get Well, a Doug Dressler <laughs> is crossing me up up here. And that is why I'm not wearing blue and a mask behind home plate. And he is. There's the pitch. And that one is going to be blocked by James. And the count will move to two and one. Outfield playing... Jones to pull to left. That one is down, and the count is now three and one. Morris working quickly. The three run, three one delivery is in for strike two. I think Jones was a little bit surprised on that one. That one was a little bit higher. All the other pitches have been knees or lower. The full count pitch. 
Fouled at the plate. Good pitch by Morris to challenge Jones there. To, he's looking for the punch out, I think, uh, on the full count here. Let's see what he does here. Morris goes with a curveball and gets him looking. What a great pitch. Good curveball. Started in on the hands and just ended up in, in the strike zone. Uh, I think it just froze Jones there. Maxwell just two hits in the game. Each team with only two hits. And Zach Troughton now the batter. Troughton reached on an error, scored in the first, walked in the third. And then Brian Berg, who was running for him, was stranded at second base. James digs this one out of the dirt. Ball one. Five-nothing ball game. Maxwell, three in the first, two in the second. The three in the first, all those runs were unearned. This one is going to be inside and off the glove of James. Two and oh. Troton has been cruising. He's only given up two hits himself. This one is low and away, ball three. Three and zero on Troton, likely taking. He does and he takes strike one. And that one is going to be ball four. So Troton walks for the second time in the game. He's keeping his teammate, Brian Berg, pretty active. Berg out there for the third time <laughs> running the bases. For Troton, it's always interesting when your ability to get on the field is going to be dependent upon the guy getting on base. Anything he can do to help out the team, I'm pretty sure he'll be excited. Oh, sure. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's just he probably wants to be out there more frequently. Troton goes 0 for 4. It's a lonely day for Berg, who's on the run on this first pitch. The throw to second base. LeGru tries to apply the tag, but Berg slides under it for the stolen base. And first pitch was a strike to Lane LeGrand, who has been hit by a pitch and struck out swinging in the third inning against Cronin, facing Morris for the first time, one down and a runner at second base. That is a curveball that drops off the table and into James Mitt for <laughs> strike two. Whew, tough to hit that one. That one's got a lot, of, a lot of movement on it. No balls, two strikes on LeGrand. Scott Wells waiting on deck. Morris steps off the rubber. Brian Berg on its second. McGrew trying to keep him close. Outfielders are playing straight away up. Uh, I don't think they really think he's going to pull or, oh. Down to first base on a couple of hops. Connor is there, gets the put out unassisted. Down to third goes Berg. Two down in the inning. Now batting for the third hitter, number five, Scott and that brings Wells. up S Scott Wells. Wells 0 for 2. Grounded out to LeGru at second base and then was retired on, on an outstanding play by, by Morris at shortstop with the infield in last inning, saving two runs. And a curveball to Wells is in there for strike one. Boy, that curveball is fantastic. Yes, absolutely. He's got a lot of drop, a lot of bang it, or a lot of bend in it. Starts up at the shoulder of the batter and then ends up around his knees. The 0-1. Fastball, and that's fouled away. And Wells is late on it. You can see how the curveball sets up the fastball. Uh, good pitching here by Morris. The way to change it up, switch it up a little bit. Hit him with the curveball, hit him with the fastball. Let's see what he does here for him. Boy, Wells is right on the chalk in that batter's box, and he's going to try to punch it up the middle. It's a slow roller. Stevens is going to have to hustle, and he took too long on it. And that's going to get a run in on an infield single. And then trying to get to second is Wells. Connor's throw, and Wells is out. What a throw by Connor. But the run counts. So Stevens, I don't know if he got a bad read on that ball, which was off the end of the bat and was spinning oddly. But 
Wells gets the infield single, drives in the run, and then is retired, trying to extend it to second base after the ball got away from Cole Connor at first, but Connor retires him, and that will end the top half of the fifth, but Maxwell gets another run aboard. They lead at 6-0 here in the Division 5 Northern Section Championship game from Butte College. You're following the action on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Play on Sports will have live coverage of all the Northern Section Track and Field Finals on Friday, May 24th. You can also watch highlights from the championships of every spring sport in the Northern Section on PlayOnSports.com. Don't forget to check the Play on Sports broadcast schedule page for information on all of our upcoming broadcasts from around the Northern Section and beyond. The spring championships are here only on PlayOnSports.com. Well, Greg... Chester's running out of time here. They've got three more at-bats. Troton has pretty much had their number most of the game. He's surrendered just two hits. And he'll be facing the four, five, and six hitters in the order for Chester, Spencer Lee, Damon Stevens, and Jason Schleter. What does Chester have to do differently here offensively? Other than the <laughs> obvious, get hits and <laughs> base runners. But, I mean, what in particular is going to help them do that against Troton, who's been cruising? Five strikeouts. Uh, continue working the at bats, uh, make th Troton throw some more pitches or, or a lot of pitches uh, and get his pitch count up. Maybe ar and at that point his arm will probably start getting tired. Pitches will start being up in the zone, and those are the ones that you really want to drive. So, well, the batter is Spencer Lee, and this is only his second at bat of the game. Though he's been in the box three times, I'll explain that in a moment as he looks at one way outside for ball one, grounded out to third in his last at-bat. He was up in the first inning, but while he was up, Hunter Morris was thrown out at second base as that one's a strike one and one. So he continued on a fresh at-bat in the second inning, and now here he is in the fifth. <laughs> the 1-1 one, one pitch swung on and missed on a breaking ball, and the count is one and two. Five strikeouts through four innings for Troton. This one's going to be popped in the air to center field, right center field, and there is Legrand to make the play. And there is one down. And you can see that Maxwell's center fielder is shading everything to right field right now, and he had that one played perfectly. Yeah, I don't think the Chester hitters are going to be able to get around on Troton. So, yep, pull him to go away and away and away, or play him to go away. So. Right now, the loneliest player on Maxwell's roster is Martin <laughs> Rangel, who is, unlike his counterpart, Chris Bereznik, getting no action out and left. This one's poked to right center, and it's going to fall over the second baseman's head. Devin Lee, a single on the first pitch for Damon Stevens, the third hit of the game for Chester, and they've got a man aboard with one down. Good piece of hit, and went with the pitch there. The pitch stayed outside. He went with it outside and just poked it right out into right field. And Jason Schleter, the batter. So Stevens, who struck out looking his first time, now one for two, and Schleter is looking to replicate that. He also struck out looking in his first at-bat. The left-hander shows bunt and takes strike one. David Lee is on the grass at third. Jones, over at first, is trying to hold Stevens on, but then breaking towards home plate when Schleter showed bunt the first time. It's a 6 nothing ball game, and Schleter is going to look at one high for ball one. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Bounced up the middle. This could be two. There is Perry with a throw over, and that is the double play. Perry gets second base by himself and then retires Schleter at first on a throw to Jones. So the 6-3 double play ends the inning and the threat by Chester. We move to the top of the sixth inning, and Maxwell comfortably in front, 6-0 in this Division Five championship game. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here today? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. It'll be Mathis, Devin Lee, and Bryce Perry for Maxwell. As we go to the top of the sixth inning, Hunter Morris back out on the mound for his second inning of work. And it was a productive first inning, though he did give up a run. Looks like we're going to have some changes here in the lineup for Maxwell. 
And we'll bust out our rosters here, folks, and get you up to date as quickly as possible. So it looks like Hunter Ortiz might be batting for Trent Mathis here. He's in the on-deck circle. And then number six. That is Devin Lee. So Lee was the original spot. Well, we'll get him one at a time. And we've got some activity in the Maxwell bullpen down the right field line. Looks like we've got David Lee now starting to throw down there. So David Lee, the third baseman, now throwing in the bullpen for Maxwell. Hunter Ortiz will be batting for Trent Mathis. So that will end Mathis' day at the plate. He was 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a flyout. And to the plate, Ortiz this year. Only 13 plate appearances. This will be his fourth, batting 182. He does have a double and a couple of runs batted in. Two hits, two runs driven in. So again, a lot of productivity. You see some of these guys don't have high batting averages, <laughs> but they got a lot of runs driven in given the number of hits they have. And James is going to call timeout and head out to the mound to talk to Morris. Yeah, it seems they all come up in big spots here, <laughs> driving a whole bunch of runs. And James now jogs back. And gets set behind the plate. We have the final book on Tim Cronin. We'll get that for you in just a moment here. Morris out there, as we said, for his second inning. And this one is going to be low and in the dirt for ball one. Cronin, again, four innings. We mentioned two earned runs, five total. Only gave up two hits. Walked three, hit one, struck out two. Not a bad line at all. We'll take that for a starting pitcher. This one's going to be grounded to the second baseman on a couple of hops through the legs, but with some time and making the play. As we have some defensive changes as well for Chester, I've been looking at Silas LeGrew all game, and suddenly LeGrew got a lot taller. And then I realized that that's not LeGrew anymore. That's Spencer Lee, who's over at second base. So Lee is now moved to second. So Lee now not only was he the DH, but he is the second baseman. And there's one down in the inning. So we're trying to keep track of all the paperwork up here for you as Ortiz retired one down on the ground out. And De Devin Lee, the batter, he has walked twice and scored. And he takes strike one on Morris. Spencer Lee playing Devin Lee in the hole at second base. This oh. one's going to be popped in the air towards Spencer Lee, but coming on is the right field. Uh -oh. oh, and I think Spencer Lee was called off by Schleter, and Schleter was saying that ball was not that far from you. I was just hustling to see if I could back you up or make a play, but Spencer Lee let it go, and that's going to show up as the shows up as a line drive in the book. There you Greg, go. it's a single to short right field on the miscommunication between the right fielder Schleter and the second baseman Spencer Lee. So a runner aboard with one down and the leadoff batter Bryce Perry is up. Here's a throw over to first base and Devin Lee is back in with a head first slide. Perry has flied out twice to left, single to left, stolen a couple of bases and scored a run, driven in one as well. Good day for your leadoff batter there. Sir, and, and your number nine hitter has reached base all three times. Your nine hitter can sometimes act as your secondary leadoff hitter late in, the, uh, late in the lineup. And even though Bryce Perry has been on base, I mean, you've got two guys now with six plate appearances and four times they've reached base. They've scored two runs of your six and driven in one of them. It's very productive down at the bottom of the lineup, and, and it just works its way through. So it's just almost like a cycle that it, that it keeps going through, facing two leadoff hitters, essentially. Here's a quick throw over. The throw is high, and Lee is back in easily. One down, top of the sixth inning. The count is 0-1 on Bryce Perry, who bounced the first pitch foul. 
And Morris is going to step off. Devin Lee is a threat to run. He's stolen only a couple of bases this year, but he's going right now, and he's going to be in standing up. It's a stolen base. I wouldn't necessarily call it catcher indifference because James looked interested but realized if he threw down, he <laughs> was then going to be in time. So. so instead of catcher indifference, it's catcher interest, but a stolen base nonetheless for Lee, and he's in scoring position with one out, and this one's going to be popped high in the air to center field. Isaac Thompson coming in on the ball, and he makes the grab for the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up Blake Vieira, who who is 0 for 2 today with a run batted in on a sacrifice fly. He's flied out to left. His sacrifice fly went to left. His first at bat was a grounder to third base. Damon Stevens at the time, now Tim Cronin. So heads up, Chris Bereznek and Tim Cronin. The ball is coming your way, more than likely. Get ready. This is his first at bat against Hunter Morris as he faced Cronin in his first three. This one is down for ball one. Here's a throw to second base. Spencer Lee coming over. Devin Lee is back. I don't foresee. Lee trying to get to third with two outs on a stolen base attempt. You don't want to commit the last out at third base no, doing that, but they have been testing James' arm. Here's a throw to home plate, and the curveball gets in for a strike. Count even at one and one. Morris checking second. The pitch to Vieira, there it is to the third baseman, Cronin off his glove. He can actually make the tag, and oh. he misses the base runner running by him, and Vieira is on on the air. Tough break for Cronin, who had the ball bounce off his glove, and then Lee running on the play ran right by him, and I don't think he saw him out of the corner of his eye coming his way, Greg. I don't think so either, and they were really close actually to the base, so it would have been a foot race to see if he could get there. And here's something you don't see that often anymore, and I was wondering if that rule had been taken out at the high school level, the fake throw to third and the throw to first. Here is a pump fake throw down to second base by James. They removed it at the major league level. That long-standing kick, high leg kick to third and then first. fake over to first, but they've removed that, and they're starting to remove that at a lot of the lower levels as well. And Soon we'll trickle down to the high school level. I know our umpires would have been all over that. Here's a long drive to left field going back on a Bereznik, and it's off the warning track and the wall. That's going to get two runs in easily, and staying at first base is David Lee with the longest single you'll ever <laughs> see. That went about 360 feet. <laughs> One hop the wall, and he stays at first as two runners come in. Blake Vieira, who is down at second base on the steal, scores as well. So a single drives in two by David Lee, and that extends us to an 8 nothing ball game. And I didn't see if maybe his first base coach held him up there because they were up 8 nothing. no sense going for the extra bag, or maybe they just misread the play. No, it looked like he stepped over first, uh, realized it, and then went back to get on first, and then by that time the ball was already headed back into uh, back into the infield. Well, that'll slow you down, certainly, as this one misses is outside. The batter is Russell Jones. Jones, a double in the game, one for three. Scored a run, struck out, reached on an error. 8 nothing. Maxwell leading it. Throw over to first base. Nice scoop, Connor in the dirt. Where'd David Lee is in. Lee was so excited to hit the ball so far, he <laughs> missed first base. That one is low. Count is two and one. Two down in the inning. Two more up on the board for Maxwell. Top of the sixth. That's a curveball, and that is right down the heart of the plate, two and two. <laughs> I was going to say, that was a really good curveball. 
Russell Jones is fourth at bat of the game, and he's in a bit of a hole with a runner at first. 2-2 pitch. That gets away from James. Getting down to second easily is David Lee on the pass ball. And the count is full on Jones. Really zoning in here as a number four hitter. Uh, he's really looking for a pitch close to the play to drive. So something like that, you just let it go. And it's in the dirt. Ball four. So a walk. Surrendered by Morris. And Zach Troton comes to the plate. Troton is scored twice, or rather his proxy has, Brian Berg, <laughs> who's been running for him all game. Troton has reached on an error, walked twice, scored twice. I put that in air quotes and stolen a base. And that was also Brian Berg. That's a, Brian Berg's pretty handy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Score runs for you, steal bases. If you ask him nicely, he'll carry your books from one class <laughs> to the other. Get you a soda between classes, Ooh. fifth and sixth period. There's a swing and a miss by Troton. Big cut by Troton. He was trying to really end this game right there with a three-run bomb. Berg will even take attendance at homeroom. <laughs> First and second, two down. A jack of all trades. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to get away from James again, and the runners will advance. And you wonder if... James is starting to tire just a little bit because those were not getting away from him earlier in the game, but he's had so many that were in the dirt. He's been so active back there behind the plate. It does take, take a toll on you as a catcher, especially, and, and it's starting to warm up too. Whew. A lot of work. <laughs> You're really feeling for him, aren't you, Greg? Ah, uh, yeah. I've check, been there before. Check swing by Troton, and the home plate umpire, Dresler, Doug Dresler, says he held up in time. The count is three and one. Two down, first base is open. 3-1 pitch. That's going to be bounced right back to the pitcher Morris on two hops. Knocks it down. The easy throw over ends the inning. But two more runs are in for Maxwell. They lead it 8-0 as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning in this Division 5 championship game. You're following the action in the northern section right here on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here today? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. So we've got some movement on the infield for Maxwell. Zach Troton is now off the mound. He's over at first base. That's displaced Russell Jones to third base. And David Lee has moved to the pitcher's mound. And he will take over and look to close out this baseball game for Maxwell. He'll be facing Isaac Thompson, Tristan James, and Chris Perez next. So these seven, eight, nine hitters in the order for Chester. And we take a look at David Lee, the junior. Two and one this season. Season seven appearances started two games, saved three of them. He saved the only three games of the year for Maxwell. Seventeen and two thirds innings, twenty-two strikeouts, just three walks, and he's given up only thirteen hits. So he's l allowing less than one base runner per inning. Sixteen <laughs> base runners in seventeen and two thirds, and I want that kid on my fantasy team. Yes, absolutely. So David Lee, the right-hander, will be out there. Again, Jones over at third base. Perry stays at short. Devin Lee stays at second. And Zach Troton moves over to first base. Troton, the pitcher of record. We'll get his final numbers for you here. And they'll be pretty easy because there are a lot of zeros up on that board yeah. right now. He goes five innings. No runs, none earned. And gives up a mere three hits in the ball game. While striking out five, he doesn't walk a batter. Good That's line. pretty darn good. Very good line for Tron in the championship game. Coming up big and, and performing for your team, it just makes it a lot much e or that much easier for your team to go out and just perform. So here is Isaac Thompson, and this is only his second at bat of the game, which shows you Troton's mastery through five, as Lee is going to start him with a fastball on the outside corner for strike one. Thompson grounded to third base. That is a long time between at-bats. <laughs> That's a curveball that 
buckled my knees from up here in the box. <laughs> and it's 0-2. What a great pitch. Good teams on baseballs will allow a lot more movement. This Ooh. one is going to be fisted to first base. It's a slow roller and the quick toss to Troton, underhanded by David Lee, gets the put out. That ball died right on the grass. And a nice hustle play by Lee, flipping to Troton for the first out of the inning. Yeah, good thing they're not hitting with wood bats because that thing would have been splintered. That was all in would on have. his hand. Whew. It was your golf game, though. You would have loved how that <laughs> laid up on the green. Here's the first pitch, and this is going to be towards center field, and it's going to land in. Tristan James, his first in. They're going to try to throw him out at first base, and it's going to bounce into the dugout. So James gets second base easily as Lane LeGrand decided to test his arm and try to throw James out at first from center field. And instead, James has the fourth hit of the game for Chester. And Chris Bereznek, the hitter. James now one for two in the game. Bereznek 0 for one. He struck out and then was thrown out at first base as the ball got away from the catcher, Vieira. <laughs> on deck, Hunter Morris. Good hustle by James. Swing and a miss on that first pitch. I don't know what it is, but it seems like the bottom half of the order has seen the ball better coming from Lee than they were from Troton. And I know our sample size is small. This is only the third hitter, but they are approaching this a little bit more confidently, it appears, Greg. Yes, it does, absolutely. They, they are zoned in, they're really taking their cut, uh, taking good hacks too, like pitches that are in the strike zone, nothing out of the strike zone, so. A ball and a strike, one out. They're mm -hmm. waving at that one, Bereznek, and it's one and two. James on at second base after the single and the error by the center fielder. One, two pitch. That is a curveball that just misses mm. outside, and Bereznik has just breathed a sigh of relief. That was very close. Two and two. <laughs> Good pitch. Hasn't froze it. That one is going to be pulled foul as Troton unable to get to the baseball. That's also by Troton. And good footwork by first base coach Dave Wren to get out of the way. <laughs> And I mean that I mean that to get out of the way of Troton, not the <laughs> baseball. <laughs> I think I was more nervous about Troton going on that one. The pitch. Popped in the air into foul territory. Jones is hustling. Players converge and it's gonna fall outside the reach of Martin Rangel, Bryce Perry, and Russell Jones. And Bereznek with second life here. The count is two and two. Yeah, I thought that ball was up there for a while, too. I thought somebody might be able to track it down, but just fell right in, in between the whole triangle. Lee from the stretch delivers. That is a curveball, and that misses. Full count. Another good snapped-off curveball there by Lee. Boy, Bereznek has outstanding vision. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there have been two that have been right there on the edge, and he's laid off. The full count pitch. And that time, he swings and misses at one that might have been ball four. That was up. But he went for it and struck out for the second time in the game. And a little bit frustrated because that was – he looked at some that were very close and then frustrated with himself that he went for that one that would have been ball four. It's tough with two strikes. And now Hunter Morris, the batter, one for two in the game. A single to right, a fly out to center. And now Vieira is going to talk to David Lee out on the mound. Lane Legrand, one of the few times in the game now in center that we've seen him shift over into the left side, on the left field side of things. He's mostly been playing in right center field. Yeah, and that was with Troton on the mound. So uh, just from our vantage point, uh, Troton probably throws a little bit harder than, than Lee. So these batters will get a little bit late on it and push it out to the right field for a right-handed batter. But great plays. Uh, Great adjustments made by and just knowing your, your team and your pitcher. So. And the batter as well, Hunter Morris with quick hands as he looks at ball one and then swings and fouls one off Vieira. And the count evens at one and one. Two down in the inning. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Eight nothing. Maxwell well in front, but a runner in scoring position for Chester. And they're looking to get that goose egg off the scoreboard with two down and a base hit by Morris may very well do it. Again, Legrand is shading to left. Big gap in right center. The 
curveball is swung on and missed by Morris, and the count is one and two. Your curveball, a lot of bite to it. It's interesting, the outfield's playing Morris to pull, but the infield is not. It's the second baseman, Devin Lee, in the hole at second base. That's a curveball. It's going to be bounced towards the shortstop. Perry goes backhand, oh. drops the baseball, and the runner's aboard. That might have been a tough play anyway. Morris with good speed. That would have been a long throw. I'm inclined to give a single to Morris from the infield on that, but that was a tough play by... I would agree. He was going to his right. He would have to shift his weight to make that throw coming back yeah, to, to the first. Game. And Morris was really hustling down the line. It, it would have been close. And right. we're feeling generous, folks. It's the end of the school year. and <laughs> Runners at the corners. And the batter is Tim Cronin, who just got a haircut from David Lee on a curveball that buzzed the tower. 1-0. and oh. Yeah, when you have such a big breaking curveball like that, like David Lee does have, it's important to keep that thing down. If you leave that thing up, it, it can come back in and hurt you. Cole Connor waits on deck. Big at bat right here for Chester. Runner going. This one's towards center field. No, it's going to get to the shortstop, Perry. It was off the end of the bat, and Perry catches it on the edge of the grass, and that will end the inning. A fly out to shortstop, and we've completed six. We move to the seventh inning. Maxwell leading it. 8 nothing in this Division 5 championship game in the northern section right here on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at YouTube.com slash PlayOnNetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week. From your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Glad you're joining us wherever you're following the action from around the world. Northern Section Baseball here on playonsports.com. The first of a triple header today and the first of six games we're covering. We're also at Shasta College today. Those games on demand. We'll have them available after the games are complete today. Later on this evening, you can watch those in their entirety. Plus all the action from today which we should have up a little bit more quickly for you. We are the beneficiary of Butte College's quick edition of wireless internet for us here at the Press Box. And it has been absent for a few years, but they put it in this year for us, and we thank them very, very much. Their staff here doing outstanding work in supporting the Northern Section Baseball Championships and your ability to watch these games live on playonsports.com. Jared Wright is manning the control tower for us today and doing an outstanding job. Jason Devine providing you all the video. I'm Jeff Kurtz alongside my broadcast partner, Greg Olivier, and we will be with you all day long. So settle in, folks. <laughs> Wherever you are following this action, I, I, I always picture it, with baseball, it's always been such a radio thing, and you're out there working on your yard on a beautiful sunny day, and now I've got it that people are got their handheld device in their pocket <laughs> while they're clipping the lawn, taking care of the weeds, got their computer on in their garage while they're tinkering with whatever. Hopefully that's how your Saturday is going. We're certainly enjoying our time here at the ballpark. Absolutely. Lane Legrand, Scott Wells, and Hunter Ortiz, your scheduled hitters for Maxwell in the top of the seventh inning. They've been in 11 straight championship games, losing last year, but head coach Forrest Bateman's first year looking to give him a championship. We were joking with him before the game. He said, yeah, we've been here 11 years in a row, and it's my first. I said, so everyone's got this as old hat, and you're all fired up. <laughs> so that's about right. As this pitch is low, ball one. Maxwell with a, lot, a number of traditions, and one of them, especially since you can set up a lot when you're here 11 years in a row, is the 1-0 <laughs> pitch is in there for a strike one and one. One of the traditions that was started all the way back those 11 years ago was the players all getting a haircut and bleaching their hair blonde, and they've done that every year since. It worked the first time, and in baseball, if you've got something that works, you stick with it as the 1-1 one, one is outside for ball two. So everyone got that done, even the coaches, except for one of the assistants who was concerned that at his <laughs> advancing age, he might lose hair as opposed to just having his hair go blonde. So he didn't want to gamble. Yeah, that's one gamble you don't want to lose. No, that is true. <laughs> As you get up there, that's a gamble you want less and less of. And so he is the lone holdout on that. But otherwise, everybody else... As Coach Bateman said, we finished the semifinals. We get ready for this championship game. We have a team dinner, and then we get turned over to the moms. Uh. 
as the 3-1 pitch from Morris is going to be ripped. Nice oh. short hop by Cronin. High throw, and Connor climbs the ladder and lands on the bag for the out. What a play. Well, Chester may not win this game, and there has been some shaky defense at points, but they have made some spectacular plays as well, and that Cronin-Connor play is one of them. Good short hop. Just snapped it up, and then... Had to get the ball out quick because he was moving down the line. Got it out a little bit high, but a good concentration there by Connor at first. So Legrand now 0 for 4 in the or excuse me 0 for 3 in the game with has been hit by a pitch. Now we got Scott Wells who reached on an infield single, drove in a run. This it's one's up. fouled back. He's one for three. Wells has had an interesting day. He thought he had a base hit in the third inning on a line drive up the middle with the infield in, but Morris, who was at shortstop at the time, made a great diving stab to his left to retire him. This one swung on a miss for strike two. Then in the last inning, Wells finally reached on an infield single. The ball was then thrown away after he had crossed first base. Trying to advance to second, he was thrown out. Of all the hitters for Maxwell, too, he is really the one who crowds the plate the most. You could see it, Greg, and I don't know if Jason can get a shot of this, but when he steps in, he is right on the edge of the chalk, right up by the plate. Just giving that pitcher something, just a little bit more to worry about, trying to groove one in on your hand. And instead, Morris stays away from him, and Wells strikes out swinging for the second out. And that brings up, well, it was going to bring up Hunter Ortiz. Oh. But now instead, we've got a pinch hitter for Ortiz, and it's going to be Trent Mathis. Actually, excuse me, Mathis. So Mathis and Ortiz at the high school level, you can interchange on some of your hitters. And so Mathis back in there, he's going to take one inside for ball one. So Mathis 0 for 2, had a break in the 6th when Ortiz hit for him, and now Mathis back in there. Choking up on the bat a little bit, nobody on, two down. And that one's going to get away from James, and it's low, 2-0. and oh. Hitters count right here for Mathis. Pitch is swung on a miss for strike one. A little low. I think it would have probably been ball three there. It's tough to see if you've made up in your mind that you're going to swing two and somebody's throwing, throwing a little bit harder. It's hard to pull that bat back. That one is up in his eyes, and he swings at that. Two and two. So deuces across the board. Two and two, two out. In an eight-nothing ball game, top of the seventh. And that one is low, and the count goes full. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Pops straight back, catches the top of the netting. I don't know what the baseball return policy is for these section championship games. I know in Little League, you used to get a free Coke out of it or something yeah. if you return the baseball. <laughs> and boy, at when you're seven, eight, nine years old, that is high currency as the ball is going to be high, ball four, and Mathis is aboard. Good at bat. He did take a couple questionable swings there. Uh, one ball away, low and, low and away, another ball up around his eyes, but worth the count, got a walk, and he's on base now. And Brian Berg, who's becoming a folk hero for us in the press box, is – Going to give up being the designated runner for Zach Troton and get a chance to hit. So Berg is the batter. And he's only had 15 plate appearances coming into this game, but he's batting 444. So he's taken advantage of those, driven in a run, batting from that right-hand side. And now we've got time called as everyone was ready except for our home, cape, home plate umpire, Doug Dresler, and now he's set. So Berg, who's had an active day running the bases for Troton, looks at his first pitch of the game and watches one go outside for ball one. Runner at first is Mathis, two down in the inning. Mathis reaching on a walk. That one is low. James blocks it, and then hustling to second base is Mathis on the wild pitch. Nice job by James keeping it right in front of him, but... As soon as that ball was in the dirt, Mathis was hustling down to second base. 
Two balls, no strikes on Burke. Bryce Perry on deck. Strike one swinging. It looked like Morris just took a little bit off that ball. Yeah, uh, and th that's what they say sometimes. You throw 90% to to get your strikes and, and hit your spots versus 100% and don't know where you're going to be at. Two hopper to Cronin, who fields it at his chest level and throws over to Connor to end the inning. So no runs across for Maxwell. They have completed their regulation at bats. They've got seven innings hitting under their belts. They lead eight nothing and we move to the bottom of the seventh and Chester looking to see what they can do as they trail by eight here in the division five championship game for the northern section on playonsports.com. Play on Sports will have live coverage of the northern section track and field finals on Friday, May 24th. You can also watch highlights from the championships of every spring sport in the northern section on playonsports.com. Don't forget to check the Play on Sports broadcast schedule page for information on all of our upcoming broadcasts from around the northern section and beyond. The spring championships are here only on playonsports.com. It'll be Cole Connor, Spencer Lee, and Damon Stevens. Last inning was the first time in the game that Chester had two runners aboard in an inning. They have been shut out so far. And I think the first order of business for Chester is to take care of that, and then you start worrying about the rest of it. But they're down to their final three outs as Maxwell looking to put the finishing touches on a Division Five championship, our first of three games here today on PlayOnSports.com. We move to Division Three next. And in Division Three, we'll have a pretty good matchup for you, folks. As we've got Calusa and Calusa Winters. Playing Winters. Calusa and Winters. A matchup of uh, one and two seeds there as well in the Division Three championship game. Cole Connor, the batter, he's got an infield single, then was picked off of first base in the fourth inning. He's also struck out once in the game, one for two. And that one's going to be hit to the left field, but coming on, Rangel, his first play of the game. And he retires Connor after one pitch, first out of the inning. And Connor a little bit frustrated with that because he got his best swing and drove the ball pretty well, but Rangel was there. And hit it right to him, too. It's tough. I, at that point, you just want to keep swinging. Spencer Lee, the batter, 0 for 2, grounded to third in the second inning, flew out to center field in the fifth. And the center fielder Lane LeGrand playing him towards left. His pitch is well outside, ball one. Not a save situation here for Lee. He came on when his team was already up 6 nothing, yeah. And they've added two since. This one is a swing and a miss on a chest-high fastball, one and one. Troton looking for his seventh win of the year and one that will give his team a Division V championship. And he is the pitcher of record right now for Maxwell. That pitch is well outside, and it's two and one. Wind now blowing in a bit from right. The two one. That just misses, and the count goes three and one. Damon Stevens on deck. Three one pitch, Ooh. nice fastball, and Lee misses it, and the count is now full. Three balls, two strikes. One down in the inning. And make Ooh. that two as a knee high fastball on the outside corner, an almost unhittable pitch, and Spencer Lee is retired. Oh, good pitch by David Lee there. That was just <laughs> filthy on the outside corner, knee high. Not much you can do with that pitch besides just foul it off. But Damon Stevens, one for two on the game, a single to right, a strikeout, and he pops this one straight back and out of play, 0-1. Stevens trying to keep this alive for Chester. Maxwell looking to close it out. Jason Schleter on deck. The 0-1. Oh. That is a curveball that is strike two as <laughs> Stevens <laughs> Was about to do the limbo under that ball, and it broke right back across the plate. The 0-2 pitch from Lee, who's not wasting any time now. Curve ball, bounce toward short. This could do it. Coming on is Perry. He's got the throw, and Troton makes the catch, and that does it. Maxwell is your Division Five champion. 
And the mandatory dog pile in the middle of the oh, field, Maxwell, <laughs> is won the title. The number two seed back on top. Their 11th straight year in the championship. And after losing it last year, they have won the Division Five championship game. Eight to nothing, your final score. Folks, stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. We'll be back in just a moment. We'll name our player of the game. We hope to have an interview with them after the game is complete down on the field if we can. Again, you've been following the action in Division Five on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Back with more in a moment. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. And now it's time to put the hats on and go get some work done. But they're all going to look to make a statement early. Immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. And now it's 
time to put the hats on and go get some work done. So they're all going to look to make a statement early. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. Immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. And now it's time to put the hats on and go get some work done. So they're all going to look to make a statement early. Immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. And now it's time to put the hats on and go get some work done. So they're all going to look to make a statement early. Back here on the PlayOnSports.com postgame show, Jeff Kurtz joined by our player of the game, Zach Troughton. His seventh win of the year is his biggest. A Division 5 Northern section 
championship for Maxwell. Oh, you know, very few hits today, five strikeouts. You looked really in command out there. Was this your best pitching performance this year, would you say, or how would you characterize it out there on the mound for it's, you? It's close to my best. I, I just tried throwing strikes. My curveball was working pretty good today, and they were chasing it. What was your game plan going into this? And for your, for yourself personally, going out on the mound, you've got a team in Chester with only 10 players on the roster, but they're the number one seed. You guys have a lot of tradition behind you. What was your mindset going out in the field today? I knew I just had to throw strikes and rely on my infield and outfield to make plays, and they did today. Yeah, they did an outstanding job. How has this season been for you guys as a whole? Talk about the evolution of this team. Maxwell's got such a great baseball tradition. I was joking with Coach Bateman before the game. It almost seems old hat. You guys are here every single year. It's an expectation. Was that your sense coming into the season? You guys just assume you're going to be here in this championship Yeah, game? we've been here, I think, 11 straight. 11 straight. We, we know we're a good club. We have good coaches. We just try to win. Well, you did a great job today. What was the difference in the game? When did you guys think? Was it that first inning when you got three up on the board? You thought, okay, if I can go out there and shut these guys down, we're going to be fine. Yeah, it was the first inning when we have three runs. There are not many teams that scored that many runs off me, so I knew three runs would have been good enough for for the win, so I had a lot of... How does that help you as a pitcher? You go out to the mound for your first inning of work, you're already up 3 nothing. It's It keeps me motivated, throw strikes. It's a, it's a good feeling. Now you got to sit. Now you got to tell us a little bit about how the blonde hair tinting went. When was that this week? I know it's a team tradition. It was it's going on for a long time. It was, was it this week or was it before the playoffs? It was the game before the playoff. I think that when was the playoff? Like a Thursday. It was probably on a Wednesday. And we all went to a friend's house and we all got our hair hair bleached and it burns. <laughs> <laughs> but worth it if you're going to win a title, oh, yeah. right? Definitely worth it. <laughs> it's the sweetest hair burn you'll ever have, folks. And Zach Troden, our PlayOnSports.com player of the game, his seventh win of the year. Again, five strikeouts as his team wins it eight to nothing over Chester. Thanks so much for joining us, and congratulations. Thank you. We'll be back wrapping up here on the post game in just a few mo moments, folks. Please stay with us. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Back here on playonsports.com, Jeff Kurtz joined by my broadcast partner, Greg Olivier. It was a Almost, you can almost characterize this as a very easy and smooth performance out on the mound for Zach Troughton today as he gets the win, and Maxwell comes away with a very simple 8 nothing victory. Yeah, they, they came out as the second seed, and normally, like we said before, the second seed is usually kind of the underdog when it comes into this game, but with Chester losing their number one player, getting kicked off the team earlier this week, uh, it just made, it just it seemed like the the road was paved for, for Maxwell to go ahead and, and run through this, this game. Meanwhile, for Chester, some outstanding plays defensively for some of their young kids. This is, I think Coach Hernandez was going and thinking this is going to be a learning experience for us, and we're building toward the future with just one senior on the team and 10 players on the roster. And I think even though, obviously, you want to win the title, mission accomplished to a certain degree for Chester. Yes, you, you've gotten to that. You've now gotten to that point. It's now to mold and develop your players in order to get over that, that hump because – from the sounds of it, they're going to be playing Maxwell again next year in this same championship game. So uh, do what you got to do to get over that hump and, and to beat Maxwell. Well, that'll do it for game one. But you're going to be seeing our mugs for two more games after this. we got winners in Calusa coming up next. That game scheduled to begin first pitch at about 1 p.m. Again, Maxwell wins at 8 nothing, takes the Division Five title over Chester. For Greg Olivier, my producer, Jared Wright, and our cameraman, Jason Devine, I'm Jeff Kurtz, saying so long for just a little bit. We'll be back with the Division Three final at 1 p.m. here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com.